Right, let's cut to the chase. There's no cup of coffee here because I've already had two cups of coffee today. I'm feeling a little bit of a caffeine crash. Also, here's a broken truck. This is the Pinecone RC, the 114th. Pinecone models racing truck. It's the same as the UDI, UDI RC trucks. The, the, the breaker and the, you know, the beetle and all the rest of it. It's all, it's the same truck. It's exactly the same design, exactly the same model, same equipment, it's the same truck. Now it was Tom Lee RC that got me into these. He's done reviews on many of the various models, the Beetle, the Mini, the Breaker truck or whatever. He's done lots of different ones and he really likes them. And it was him that got me into these. Now, I really like Tom Lee RC. He's probably, probably my favorite RC channel at the moment. Um, I think he's very honest. He does very in-depth, interesting reviews and he does good videography. Um, however, I've got to say, and he sent me a free truck. However, I'm not going to agree with them on this one, at least not in the moment. Um, as you can see, this is broken. Um, I'll show you the running video and then we will discuss it, discuss what happened. I'm still trying to piece together exactly what's what's going on. Uh, but we ran two of these, this one, the Pine RC and the UDI Breaker and um, mixed results. So if you watch the video first, I'll get you back in a moment. Finally. It's been a long time coming, this. Have you got a dent in your, your shell? Yeah, no, I've got a crack in it. Brand new, they've never been used outside. We've mucked around with them indoors, uh, but his dog got hold of mine and just put a hole through it. His teeth have cracked it. Anyway, I've been looking forward to using these. Oh, I still haven't. Oh, I've got to plug my lights in. Oh, silly me. Silly you. Why is my uh Why is that not working? Really what have we got? That's how these go then. Remember there's uh three speed settings. Can I change the lights on this? I can. We'll go for full full bore, shall we? Servo's rapid, but it's not exactly progressive. Well, I mean it is, but it's a bit snappy. I think these might be a little bit uh, slower than the old um, Real Arlo. Right, we're gonna try these finally. Full speed. Go for it. All ah, right. <laughs> A bit bouncy. It's a little bit bouncy, the old mini. Oh, what was that? Ah, uh, what was that? Oh, it's, oh, my steering's bust already. My steering's jammed. Oh, there we go. That was the uh, heat sink off the motor. How did that happen? I ran over it. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> oh, what was that? All right, whatever. I've got a free heat sink now. Do you want a heat sink? Nah. All right. That was it. This really is truly made of the finest Chineseium. Yeah, have, I still, have I still got working steering? Sort of. It's a bit twitchy. Very bouncy. Ah, uh, come on. Oh. It's massively bouncy. I'm going to the left. I think Tom Lee RC's had us on here. He said these were good. They're bouncy as anything. Oi, oi, oi. There we go. They're not that they're not that bad for top speed though, are they? For the size. Nice one. I mean you can't turn, but what's it? Mine is um, sort of weaving side to side. Have you is yours doing that? 
<laughs> no, yours is quite straight. Mine is weaving left to right. My kids are stealing. Oh. It's like swimming like a fish. I think it's the play in the wheel. Look at that, it's weird. It's pretty good going round though. It does, but it's. See that? <laughs> it wiggles. I think it's the front wheel because it's been bounced off the ground. Should we have a drag race? Can I see past your big ugly coupon? Oh, it jumped! It jumped and I lost steering! Oh, it jumped! It jumped and I lost steering! Oh, oh no! It, it leapt! I don't know what happened there! I wasn't applying throttle and it shot forward. Oh no, what's it sitting on? Oh. Oh, oh no. Uh, aye. Uh, just no with these and no right now. Um. I hit the front. How did it break the back? <laughs> it did. I was. Maybe that's why. It, maybe that's why. It, it, it seemed to just. Maybe that's why it jumped round because it spun that out. No, but it, oh, oh, I might have done. Yeah. You didn't get maybe binding, but it. Yeah, it jumped up in there and shot round. I wasn't actually applying any throttle when it did it. Weird. Well, that's that then. How's your one? Good, good. Oh, bad for speed. Oh, the you speed's fine. That. Speed's fine. Um, it's a wee bit jumpy. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. This side, this side. Oh, nice. Go for a fast lap, a quick lap. Hot lap, Matthew. Go on. You're out of range. I feel they need oil shocks. I know. Horrible delay in the throttle. That was close. Oh, that was even closer. Where is it, Matthew? Where is it? Oh, you're fine. It's killer, isn't it? It really isn't pleasant. Have you still got range, or are you running at a range? No. Just visibility. I'd say yours are a lot more stable than mine. Mine wiggles a lot and jumps all over the place. Like that, but for no reason. How's the handle? Is it is it quite poor because it's not got any oil full shocks? Yeah, it's very spongy. It's yeah. spongy but juddery, it is very juddery, yeah. Someone's had a fire here, look. It? it also seems to spit out heat sinks for something. How is that bent? That's bent from the weight of that week, uh, whatever. So, this is me hitting the throttle now. Yeah, there's an awful delay. Very juddery and um, bouncy on those pogo sticks. But at least, at least your tracks arrow straight. I don't know what was causing mine to do all this. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it's not absorbing. It doesn't have sh doesn't have shock shock absorbers. It's just got springs, so there's no damping whatsoever. But um, 
Yeah, maybe I had really bad front wheel wobble or something. My, my car was all over the shop. I mean, considering what they, they cost, your one's all right. Your one's all right. I mean, what was that? It retails about 70-ish pounds. It's not brilliant, but it's all right. Some oil field shocks could be justified on yours. I think that might transform it. Mine... Maybe it comes with slick tyres as well. Mine is... Maybe it's the knobbly tyres that are creating a vibration as well. Yeah, yours has got the knobbly tyres. I know. Oh, yours are... Yours are Oh, mines are sort of semi slicks on my one. My one's kind of hot garbage. Um, not because it broke necessarily. I need to look at the footage. It might have been my fault. I'm not sure. I don't think I was on throttle when it suddenly took off and hit something and jumped. But just the way that it would it would um, vibrate back and forward and couldn't go in a straight line. Uh, mine was garbage, total garbage, and I've broken the shock tower. So. Um, the shock tower, this mount's part of it, and I've, you know, that's the shock tower there, part of it, so it goes there, but yeah, hopefully model sport keep the, the spares in. I don't know how this came out and went under the car, it's actually bent. I think it's no, look at that, it's, it's not even remotely the right size anymore. It bent all that much, just the weight of this little car. And it'll bend it back. I don't think it's ever going to be the same. Snapped it on now though, that's it. Speed one. Speed one, yeah, so it's slow, when it's going slow you can drive it. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I'm not going to make a... I'm not going to come to a conclusion on this one yet because uh, I don't know what caused that. It might have been user error. Um, I don't know what caused that horrible vibration, that wiggly wobbly horribleness. Can I look at the wishbones on yours? Because mine has got A, B, so A on the left side, B on the right side, but then it has A, B the other way around. So have they put the front arms on backwards, which would explain... Oh yeah, okay, well let me have a look at this. Hello. No, yours is the same way around. A, A, B, B. Could be that there's adjustment in the servo saver. And mine isn't as tight as your one, possibly. That might cause it. But we'll fix it first, then we'll see where we're at with it. I mean, there's a fair bit of slop. So. There is, but the servo saber is quite, quite solid. Yeah. Is that? That's hairline cracks. Is that hairline cracks in your steering arms already? See that behind the screw? No, I think that's probably a moulding process. I don't think. Oh, that no, is no, a... yours, yours is cracked. Yours is cracked. There? Yep. That's cracked. Is yours in exactly the same place? I think they're cracked. Is it actually cracked cracked? It's not though, is it? Ooh. Hmm. No, it's, it's, not, it's not fully cracked. It's not, but it has got a crack on the top it's of it. It's got a crack on the top. You've got yeah. a similar line along here. Yeah, no, I see that. You've got the same. That's definitely a crack. That's opening and shutting. What about the servo saver? To, to the steering. The servo saver seems okay. Yours is a wee, maybe a wee bit tighter. Yes, I think there's maybe a wee bit more slop in yours than yours. Mm, I don't know. But my servo saver is open and shutting a wee bit. Yours is not. So I could tighten that up. I think if you softened the shocks, that would be maybe as bouncy. Yeah, probably. Take that spacer out. Yeah, probably. I mean, there's, I've got bigger fish to fry. But, um. What do you mean? I'll just glue it back on. Hi. Chinesium. Yep. Be stronger than the Chinesium. I am going to reserve, you know, total judgment on this. Um, I do. I am leaning towards disagreeing with Tomley on this. In this occasion, I don't particularly think they're very good, but maybe oil shocks will transform them they do have bearings and everything for so for the money it's not too bad but they both have cracks on the steering rack mine ran over its own motor mount somehow motor heat sink sorry somehow matthew just dropped the uh body clip so that's that i know that's here 
Mm. Well, he found it, so that's that fixed. Stuck to it. So for the money, mine's is all right. Yours is all right so far. Um, <laughs> but then they're the same car. I, I mean, I'm just unlucky, but uh, yes. Have you bought a lemon? I might have done. Maybe the same people who made my outlaw. We'll see. That was poor. Looks very sorry for this angle. Ah, this looks very sorry from every angle of this thing. Right, uh, where's my clips? There they are. In my drive shaft. I reckon it might be transformed with uh, some oil filled chocks. And uh, obviously if we sort out the steering issue with it wobbling back and forward. Because yours will take the bounce out of it, in which case yours will be fine. Yeah. Have you tried it yet without? No, I need a wee bit set of bias to pull it out. Alright. Okay, well, not a successful first run. They don't drive great. Mine doesn't drive at all. Um, I think slicks may be slightly better than Maybe, although I've got much sort of, I've got semi slicks and mine was topping and skipping worse than yours. Your final thoughts for today? I mean, I'm happy with mine. I, uh, <laughs> I, I think it, it drove all right, considering. But yeah, you like you're saying, some oil flow shocks would make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Mine, uh, mine is garbage at the moment. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know what happened to you. Yeah, right. Not a good, not a successful couple of runs from me today. Thanks for watching. So, yes, um, <laughs> they can go well. Um, let's talk about this heatsink first of all. It fell off and went under the truck, whoop, and it fell over again. Um, <laughs> bizarre, bizarre thing to happen. It literally, the G-forces of it sliding sideways, pung it off somehow, and it went under the, it went under the truck. It's bizarre. Um, where did, how did, where did, you saw how, bent out of shape it became a bent it back and it sort of fits over it but uh weird and what's also a bit rubbish is uh you see it's been stuck on with some sort of adhesive um kind of negates the point of a heat sink a heat sink's supposed to have as much contact with the surface of the motor as possible it's supposed to be contact all the way around it with no gaps so that it can transfer heat through it it's a heat sink um, if you use adhesive, you've basically stood this off the motor, even by a fraction of a millimetre, you've got a surface between this and the motor, this is going to have no heat sinking effect whatsoever. This is not um, thermal paste like you'll find on a computer processor, this is just adhesive. Doesn't thermally transfer heat, at least not very well, so this whole thing was redundant anyway. Just if if it didn't fit right, then they should be redesigning the heatsink so it does fit right rather than compensating for trying to stick it in place. Clearly, it didn't work anyway. But this is rotten. That's rotten. Uh, that was completely silly. I mean, that there's no defending that. This heatsink, even if it sat right, like Matthew's one didn't come off. If there is adhesive underneath his one as well, I suspect there probably is. Um, that is achieving nothing. It's a just useless. So. Heat sink, yeah, whatever. Now, the crash. Um, <clears throat> as I said in the video, that might have been my fault. Um, I, as I said, I don't think I was on throttle. I do not think I was on throttle. You saw it leap up in the air. The front, the front jumped. Here, oh, I don't know. But it leapt up in the air and it hit the curb either still in midair or just hadn't just touched down. Either way, there was no steering, the front wheels were off the ground. And, um, and then it broke. The front hit the kerb and the rear broke. My guess is, it's just a guess, that this snapped, causing this to bind, causing it to leap up in the air, which caused it to hit the kerb. Because um, he hitting the kerb very unlikely the impact, the g-force of that is what caused this to snap. It's much more likely that it was a, some sort of stress fracture, some sort of weakness and that caused it to jump. For why else would it jump up in the air? As for being on throttle, I don't think I was on throttle when that happened, but I'm not entirely sure. I can't say for certain it wasn't my fault. However, um, as you saw with Matthew, there is a delay when it comes to this radio system. This is me hitting the throttle now. I've used a few RCs with two-in-one ESC receiver systems and every single one has been junk, without exception. There's almost always a delay, a horrible lag in the, in the response. 
And uh, it could have been that I was on throttle half a second before when it left up in the air. I was off throttle, but it was that input lag meant this was still on throttle, if that makes sense. It could be that, or it could be my, my mistake. Um, that's irrelevant. Neither of those things would make it leap up in the air and then break the back when the front hits the kerb. Um, there is no leap up in the air button on the transmitter. So I think what's happened is this failed, this jammed, that jumped the truck and then hit the kerb. And the kerb was irrelevant. There's no damage to the front of it. It's absolutely fine. This failed. Now I said in the, in the video that it was the shock tower. That's actually not the case. The, um, it looks like it from the first glance. Uh, but the diff housing, the top diff housing, the diff cover is where this mount, the top arm mount comes from. So you either replace the diff housing, the diff cover, top diff housing to replace this, to fix this, which I have um, somewhere. Now I ordered the spare parts from Model Sport. Um, I ordered the UDI RC parts, not the pinecone RC parts. You don't really get the pinecone parts listed in the UK. Um, more of a Far Eastern thing, but the UDI is the same truck as I said, so I've got the UDI parts. Interestingly, two of the three parts came in Schumacher packaging. So clearly Schumacher are the importers of these UDI parts, um, which I didn't know, but it's it's odd. Um, I have ordered, obviously, the diff cover. They called it differential housing jet, so the, the top diff housing, the diff, top diff cover. Um, you can see quite clearly, through the packet even, that you get the side parts to mount the arms onto. Fair enough, right, the, the, the drive shaft's fine, by the way, it didn't bend or anything. I order, also ordered two of the steering belt crank kits, they're in different packaging. This one is the UDI RC Parts Racing, which is a strange name, Parts Racing, but um, they're both the same thing. Um, because, as we said in the video, it looked like there were high, hairline cracks on that side anyway, so the front right, I'm not sure much about the front left. Uh, there is a hairline crack. There's definitely a hairline crack in that. Um, I can see it opening and shutting. You won't see it on camera at all, but in there, part of the steering assembly, there is a crack opening and shutting. So that is broken. Again, why did that break? When it hit the kerb, having been in air, in the midair, it hit it nose in. It didn't hit the wheel. Um, so that's failed rather than broken from a crash. So we've got that failing, we've got this failing and probably that failing as well um, on the first run. Now you could just look at that and say garbage. However, Matthew's one is fine. As you saw, Matthew's one still works. Okay, it bounces, but it didn't have the bouncing plus weird fishtailing thing going on that this did. Um, it could be that, yes, these are the same mouldings. The Pinecone RC is the same car. These are the same mouldings as the UDIs. But could it be that the UDI parts are better quality? It's a big if, because to me it looks like they're all made in the same factory. But it could be that they're made by different factories using the same mouldings. Could be, I don't know if that necessarily is the case, but his one didn't fail. Heatsink stayed on. This didn't break off. And I, I don't think there's any cracks in the steering bell cranks on his. We never looked closely at his one because his one's still fine. Um, but they're still they're just behind where the screws are, by the way, just in case you're wondering. <clears throat> now, looking at these, you can see where they fail. Because these look already brand new in the packet, like they're cracked. But it's mold lines. It's a mold line. It looks awful. It really looks awful. It runs all of this part here, part of the steering assembly. The crack or the mold line is all the way around it. But it is just a mold line. It's not flexing. That one's cracked. It cracked on the mold line. Uh, these ones, same thing. It looks, I mean, it genuinely looks dreadful. It looks like somebody's sold you broken bits. Um, so they'll need replaced. So there's a weakness there potentially on the mold lines, but again, if the UDI company, whoever supplies this, whoever does the moldings for this, does a better job of it, does a better quality job of it than whoever does it for pine cone, maybe it's absolutely fine. But 
I will not draw a conclusion yet because I've said it before. You can't draw a conclusion properly from one run. One run does not a review make. Well, with the exception of things that are utter garbage, and you go, yeah, that's garbage, straight away. But you can't necessarily conclude that this is, this one is garbage. This particular model right here, the one I hold in my hand, this example right here, is garbage. Matthew's one wasn't. Could all the pinecone ones be garbage? Maybe, but I don't think so. Tomley had the mini, the, pine, the pioneer, the pinecone, and it was fine. I don't think he had the same issues I've had. So, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is take the top deck off, replace the steering, bell crank assembly, and I'm going to tighten up the servo saver because the servo saver is my most likely candidate for the fact that as it was going in a straight line, the wheels were wobbling and the thing was doing this down the road. Again, Matthew's one bounced on the bogo sticks that had no damping, but it tracked straight. This one absolutely didn't. Um, so I'll tighten that up, replace the broken bits. I'll have a better look at the bell crank once it's out of the car and we'll see if it really is as bad as it looks. So there's the top of the diff cover. You see this bit's missing on that one. That's where it failed. There's no obvious, you know, weaknesses on it. There's no obvious mold, mold line there or anything, unlike the steering. There's no obvious reason why that would crack, um, but obviously it has. Uh, there are lots of marks on them, or even on the new one. Lots of marks everywhere. Like potential weak points where it's all been scratched up during assembly or during manufacturing, but um, I don't see any obvious difference between this one, which is Pinecone RC, and this one, which is UDI RC. I don't see any sort of suggestions that there's different manufacturing tolerances or quality control or anything, but um, this is the same part. So I'll put this back on, I'll put this one on rather, and then we'll get to the steering. Right, I think I found out why this is broken. This is part of the old diff housing there that's spinning freely in there. The screw goes through it, through the top arm. It's like a, it's got a smooth shaft hit. It's like a step screw. And it goes on, on there. Um, this screw was severely, severely over tight. Massively over tight. I actually thought it was super glued in. I don't know if it was or not. I don't think so. But it was way over tight. So the it's maybe slightly bent now. The um, arm could not free. If you imagine this is the part of the um, diff housing, and then the arms on this side, and it pivots like that. The screw goes through them. The screw was so tight that it wouldn't pivot. You know what I mean? It was so bound up that so this suspension was trying to move up and down like this. So it was trying to pivot. And it couldn't, it was just so bounced. That would have caused lots of binding. And rather than the shock of driving along being absorbed by the springs, um, it was all getting transferred through the top of this mount where the arm wasn't allowing to pivot. So that was definitely not helping. Um, this one moves fine. These ones move fine. This one was so tight, it probably didn't move fine. So, there we are. That's probably what happened. It still shouldn't have happened, but it's probably what happened. I'm going to put the rear shock tower on, rebuild this. I'm not going to screw the screws fully down on this new diff housing because uh, the, the screws, the front screws for the diff housing go through the top deck and I had to remove the top deck to get steering out. So, anyway, investigation work is revealing a few slight niggly quality control issues. Right. Let's split apart now and see. Get this out. I've um oh, rather than popping the ball joints off, I've just unscrewed unscrewed them instead because uh, I tried to pop these off, but uh, the plastics did not feel like they were enjoying it. So Instead, I've just gone a bit more careful than I would on a 
higher quality brand car. Right, but it's, ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Where was the one that was suspect? That's bizarre. That's really bizarre. Okay. I think I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong in that. It looks so much like a hairline crack. You won't see it on camera, but across, across, just there, just under where the ball goes through, just under there. Actually, I think it's a screw that goes through there, but whatever. Just under there. And also, on the sides and underneath, all the way around, one part there, one part further back, but underneath there. So one across there, and they look really bad. But I don't think they are cracked through. I don't even know if they're surface cracks. They, they're they like really bad looking mold lines. And the way the light was catching it, I could have sworn when I was looking at it before that it looked like they were opening and shutting. I think it was just the way the light was glancing off the mold line. It's raised. Listen. You hear that? My screwdriver's hitting the raised mold line. Same at the top. This is the one that looks worse. So it's raised up. So it isn't a hairline crack. Which is good news. Although I did buy two packets. But um, just horrible mold lines. Okay. So we had concerns of quality. I still have concerns of quality. The rear arm may have broke not through lack of quality or lack of quality control but because the screw was so over tight it was putting stress through the mount because there was no movement available to it afforded to it it still shouldn't have happened but that is at least some explanation there is no defending the adhered on heat sink because that doesn't transfer any heat. It gaps it. We've been through it. That was rubbish. And the steering looks awful, but apparently doesn't have hairline cracks in it. I could have sworn, sworn it did, but I'm, I'm incorrect on that. It's actually not hairline cracks. So that's good. The last thing, I mean, the fish tailing could have been. It was, I mean, mine was really bad. I don't know if it was, when I say fish tailing, I'm not sure if it was fish tailing. I don't know if my car was necessarily driving away and the rear was doing that, right? Or if the front was doing that. So was it pivoting on the rear or was it pivoting on the front causing it? So either way it was twitching down, but I'm not sure which way around it was. Or, right? If it was that way around, it could be caused by the fact that this was binding up and not allowing this shock absorber. It's not really a shock absorber, but this, again, no, it's not really a damper either, it's just a spring. They're not allowing it to function. If it was that, rather than that, if it was that, it's more likely caused by the fact that my servo saver has play in it. Because my servo saver does have play in it. It's not a huge amount. But it does have play in it, so uh, I'll tighten it up. Matthew's one certainly was tighter than the than this one, definitely. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. But if I manipulate the servo saver, it it opens and shuts. Um, so I'll see if I can get the screwdriver in and tighten it slightly more on the spring. Now I'm going to end up destroying that screw, I think. But it's it's hard to tell. There's a little bit of movement, but I don't think it's too bad, really. I don't think it's too bad. I, I'm inclined to think it was that way and being caused by the binding on the back suspension rather than the servo saver. I'll give the servo saver everything it's got anyway. Um, the, the screws are not good, so I am a, a kind of at risk of stripping this thing. doesn't look nice. Got a little bit, got it a little bit. So I'll rebuild the steering, rebuild the top deck, and we'll see where we're at. I will not be putting the heatsink back on. It's gonna to have to run without one. No big deal. It wasn't doing anything anyway.
All right then. Is it repaired? It is repaired. Service saver is a little bit tighter. Suspension's a little bit less broken. All right, where's the transmitter? Another issue that we experienced was just a little bit fiddly to make it bind when you first turn it on, but. Fine that time. You see the delay. Why is it turn so much better left? Doesn't seem to have more. Th Does it have more throw left? Eh, marginally. Just seems the servo is happier moving left and right. Anyway, look at that. That's what I'm talking about delay and what Matthew was referring to. If you're already, let's see, if you're already on throttle and you apply more, is there is there as bad a delay or is it only from zero to on, essentially? Let's have a look. No. Delay's still there. Okay, so there is a throttle delay all the time. And... The steering delay is less pronounced. The steering delay is fine, actually. Steering isn't too bad. There's a lot of... I was going to say wheel wobble. Because that's what it looks like, wheel wobble. But it isn't quite wheel wobble. It's transferring it through the steering arms and the whole steering rack is moving back and forward ever so slightly from the centrifugal force. It's almost as if the wheels are imbalanced or the tires are imbalanced and it's throwing everything else out a little bit. Now have a look at that steering arm, for example. You see that? I don't know if you can, but... I don't know if that's going to be enough. Especially if it's on the ground, you know? Man, there's a lot of wheel wobble, but wheel wobble's normal. My old lossy tuning car used to have wheel wobble on it. Tracked straight as an arrow, so I don't think it's that. Funny, that movement isn't getting as far as the servo saver. It's almost like the slop and the steering, but I've tightened everything up. Everything's as tight as it, can, as it can be, so I don't think it's anything that can be addressed. I think it's more the nature of the beast, really. So what's the conclusion? Well, there isn't one. I'm not going to come to a conclusion yet. I can conclude that this truck, this one right here, was crap. But they aren't all crap. Matthews isn't crap. It's bouncy. Really could do some oil filled shocks. But it wasn't crap. This might have been caused by an over tightening in the factory. It could happen to anything. It could happen to a team associated. It could happen to a really good brand. Somebody just over tightens a screw. Somebody misses it in quality control checking. It happens. It happens. I remember reading. A review years ago of the Lossy Triple X SAT, fantastic short course truck, and their review one had some screws missing. You know, I mean, it happens. Unless it was a recurring thing over multiple models, then I'm not going to make too big a fuss of it. I think that's what caused that. But we need to try this again. This, there's no excuse. This is just rubbish. The heatsink was just stupid. Anything else? There's nothing wrong with steering. You know, I tighten the surface saver up a little bit. There's a bit of slop in it. There's a bit of slop in Matthew's one. It steers fine. There's nothing wrong with the bell crank in terms of cracks and breakages. It just looked like it, but it wasn't. I thought it was opening and shutting. It was just the way that the light was dancing off it. Um, it's a bit much. But, you know, that's, it, it is what it is. Um, I need to run this again at least once more see what I really think about it. Um, at the moment, you're looking at around about £70. £70 for this one seems like a complete waste of money because mine was junky and rubbish. 
70 pounds for Matthew's one? No, that's a completely different story. That, you know, I don't know how much it, all shocks will cost, but even if even if it's an extra 20 pounds for, for all shocks, 90 pounds for a to run, you know, brushless motor, 2S LiPo, oh, it's a Lion, actually, 2S Lion. You know, is that awful? Not really. It's not bad. Um, I think there's a lot of potential in these little cars. Um, the, the delay isn't amazing. The slight issue binding when you switch it, first switch it on isn't amazing, although I think if you go through the right, let's try it again, if you go through the right process in the right order within a few seconds, I mean, so that on, then this on within a few seconds, I say, and it doesn't work. Turn that off again. There we go. Just little niggly things like that, you know, is it, you know, it's, it's got, it's got a weird stutter going right rather than left. It's all, almost two stage. It goes left and it goes bip bip, bip bip, bip You know, it's not a high quality model. At the end of the day, it's not. But is it worth your money for 70 pounds? Well, it depends if you have fun with it, frankly. Matthew was having fun with his. Rather it wasn't as bouncy as it was, but put some oil shocks in it. Put some oil shocks in his one, cure the bounciness, and he's having fun for 90 pounds. How much fun can you have for 90 pounds nowadays? Well, it depends where you go, of course. Um, but uh, that's not a disaster. That's fine. You know, it looks good. Um, it goes fine. A good number of these riffing around is, is a good laugh. My one, I wouldn't spend, you know, seventy pounds on it. Never mind ninety pounds on it. But if I've cured the issues, then I'll be in the same boat as him. So what I'll need to do is you'll need to come back if you're interested and you haven't made up your mind yet. Come back at a later date, and we will try these again, and we'll come to a more conclusive conclusion. Because right now I'm just going to say no. I can't come to a conclusion. Um, his one seems good for the money. Mine seems bad for the money. But they're the same truck. So the truth will probably lie somewhere in the middle. Um, Tomley seems to really like his ones. You know, he's had some good ones. He's had a good lot. You know, straight out of the box, he's put them down. Yes, he's had to slacken the diffs off, as did both of we. Both of we. <laughs> both of us. We both had to slacken the diffs off because they were way too tight from the factory. Um, it's still a little bit too tight, but they're all right now. Um, yeah, come back at a later date and we'll, we'll have another go, that's all I can say. I think, you know, what would really make these a lot better over the long run would be proper separate EAC and receiver and, and an associated servo. This is not a good servo, um, although it is a three ribbon servo. So this servo is compatible with a normal EAC and receiver because it's got the three cables, three ribbon. You can just plug it in. No, it's just a normal servo, servo cable. See, no problem. Um, but it's not a good servo, so um, eh. you need to redo your lights, or you would lose your functionality as in on off. You could pro program it uh, on a third channel or whatever to, to be enabled and deactivated, activated, deactivated. But I don't know if you would you'd lose the fact that this can be white only, and then white and red, and then off because it's got three stages, doesn't it? Um, I don't think, though, really, you would want to. It would make the RC better. Damn right, it would make it better. But, I mean, getting rid of two and one ASCs for any RC makes it better. But I don't think you would do that because then you're looking at even more money. In which case, you'd be, you know, what? The eight pounds, you know, ESC, and no, not worth it. You'd be talking well into hobby grade money by the time you've done that. Don't do that. Cure any little niggling issues you have with binding, binding uh, differentials, binding suspension. Put some oil shocks on it and accept it for what it is. And I'm sure you'll have a good time. But we will reapproach this and see you again in the future. In the meantime, boingity boingity boing. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you later. Bye bye.